Hi everyone, Bernard here. I hope you're all staying safe and well and welcome to the Citizen Channel. And we have a city past feature today as we delve back into the history of our wonderful club. And we have a player in time feature today, so it's going to be on a certain player. I don't always pick the guys that are uh, obviously overly well known. I do from time to time, but I like to sort of plunge into one that perhaps people don't know too much about and uh, may not have had the most successful career at City. So today, please join me as I look back at a player called Frank Caridus. Yes, Frank Caridus was at City for five seasons, but less, but managed just under 50 overall appearances, including sub-appearances for, for our wonderful club. But he, he was a servant for City. He obviously played lots of reserve games, sat on the, ben sat on the bench a bit, Far too more than he would have liked, but uh, yeah, possibly a case of uh, certainly the right place. Certainly, obviously, wasn't the great. He sort of came just at the the peak, wasn't it? Just at the peak, nineteen sixty nine seventy. So just as we sort of hit the peaks after we won the league title, after we won the FA Cup, and we're moving on to Europe, obviously, and uh, just at that sort of stage where we perhaps should have done a little bit better. But uh, yeah, probably a case of right place, but at the wrong time. Yeah, he was born 31st of May 1949 in Altrincham, where I currently live, uh, reside at the moment. So there you go, Altrincham in Cheshire. So please, we're going to have a look at Mr Frank Caridus today. Join me as we look back at his uh, five, five years at City. Please, if you're new to the channel, please push that subscribe button. I do City present stuff, City history like this, uh, City quizzes, lots of different things, all all City related stuff. So please, if you can give us a give us a follow on that subscribe button and give us a push that notification if you like what you see and tell your City supporting friends about me, I'd be very very appreciated. If you do check the playlist, you'll also see I have a film and TV channel as well. So if you've any interest in that, if you haven't, doesn't matter. There's loads of football stuff but if you or anyone you know might be interested in my film and tv channel film reviews tv drama reviews information blogs uh, cinema releases fingers crossed as i'm recording this we they may reopen at some stage in the very near future uh, but who knows anyway so please if you can check that out and uh, if anyone you know might be interested point me in my direction as well and please any 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 followers, if you want any followers or friends on Facebook and Twitter, just seek me out on there. I do check every three or four days and follow and friend everyone back. And all comments, whether on Frank Caridus or anything you want to comment about, it doesn't matter as long as it's city orientated. If it's movie orientated, go over to one of my other little film blogs. But uh, yeah, anything on Frank Caridus, any memories you've got, etc., please leave your comments. If you don't have any time for a comment, just please give us a thumbs up. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Right, so here we go. Yeah, is uh, if, if Frank Caridus was in the right place at the wrong time as far as his City career was concerned, it certainly wasn't true when Malcolm Allison spotted him uh, playing for Altrincham. Yeah, um, Allison hadn't been there to see him uh, originally. But in his own words, uh, obviously Caridus said he came on as a sub against Hyde United in a 2-0 win on the 17th of October 1969 and had a worldie. Yeah, in his own, own words, this impressing Allison, who obviously returned a couple of more times. So he, he couldn't have played that bad the other couple of times either, could he? Uh, because he, uh, he sort of must have done an OK job because uh, Malcolm Allison and City signed him at the age of 20 after only sort of three more appearances for Altrincham. So he certainly had certainly had something about him, not just that uh, game he came on a substitute. Ironically, in the official list of, if you go on to Altrincham's website, Altrincham FC website, uh, list of footballing legends, he sits at number 72, Frank Canada. I say, he only played three or four times, but there you go, Altrincham legends, he sits at number 72. So he was playing for City Reserves in November 1969 and would get a first team debut the following February 1970 and even in the Cup Winners' Cup squad by the by March 1970. So, so quite a quick rise to fame, uh, for, certainly as in not on the pitch, but at least in and around the, the first team. His debut actually came on the February the 18th, 1970, a home tie with Arsenal as he took over from the injured buzzer, the injured Mike Summerby, and wore the coveted number seven shirt. He was actually number 12 in the match programme. There should be a couple of images up there. And he was there, he was going to make a total of just six appearances that season, 69-70, including an off-the-bench appearance in the European Cup Winners' Cup semi-final against Schalke, which was more or less already a, a won at that stage. We'd lost 1-0 away, but we were uh, we actually won 5-1 at home so 
he actually came off the bench to make it a late as a late substitute in that. So he did get a couple of cup appearances. Obviously, he didn't go on to to start or start in the final or, or even be near the final. To be honest with you, but uh, he did have a little claim to fame with that one. And even as a result of that, he sat he sat pretty pl proudly there in that squad. There's a it'd be an image there of the seventy seventy one team, a fantastic one of the greatest photos. That that's one of the classic photos back in time now uh, next to Tony but with the League Cup and the Cup Winners Cup both sat there in front of the squad I think oh, that's, that's a great image it's sort of, sort of image you don't see much of that one but it's a fantastic one yeah he didn't expect to get more games when he's been asked about this uh, the following season 70-71 and he would only actually make five full appearances and one sub appearance again they're uh, sort of uh, sitting out in the reserves if you like in what was what would become a disappointing season for City after the FA League, the FA Cup, and then the Cup Wins Cup and League Cup, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a disappointing seventy seventy one. It's not not a lot happened. We came close, but not quite good enough. And in the league, it was quite a disappointing season when we finished midway uh, out of the cups early. It wasn't until 26th of December, so Boxing Day 1970, that he made an appearance from the subs bench in the Huddersfield game, a 1-1 draw at main role, which I, I would have been at that one. Yeah, he's, his main problem, he did continue, you know, he's quite a fit lad. He, he was actually doing a HND, I think in engineering or something like that. Uh, and once he'd finished that, he obviously uh, went more or less full-time training. He did actually struggle, he said, uh, to actually get up to scratch with his with his fitness. Uh, it was just tiring him out, all the actual full-time training. I think Ibbotson was probably the guy in charge then of the training. He was an ex-Olympic guy, wasn't he? Uh, I know it was tough, but tough but fun, apparently, I've heard. But, uh, yeah, he did he did struggle a little bit. That was probably, probably why he didn't do very well getting into the first team. I mean, his standing at the club was sort of more or less highlighted in the City programme of the 4th of March 1972 versus Arsenal, where the picture gallery featured Caridus, a uh, little image, you've seen images here in the back as well, featured uh, Caridus, and the subtitle underneath it actually says... Uh, City reserve team winger so there you go he'd been there for over two years but he's still classed as a reserve team winger I mean it's a bit mean to say that but uh, it's a diff different, different day wasn't it? different age but uh, yeah he made a total of zero appearances for the first team in the 71-72 season so that was even more disastrous than the season before so that probably picture with the with the winger reserve team winger was probably not telling any lies, were they? That's for sure. But uh, they know they know how to put it straight in those days, didn't they? Uh, yeah, ironically, it would be the seventy three seventy four season. We move on to that and his final one at City, when he believed he become he would become a regular in the team. And indeed, he did have his most appearances that season, as I say, after another in and out 72 73 season. Not much happened in that one. Uh, 16 appearances, three as a sub. Uh, and they actually played in five of the first six league games that season, the 73 74 season. And the November 22nd uh, match programme, November 22nd, 1973 match programme versus Walsall, a League Cup replay. He was interviewed by Paul Doherty. Uh, in it, and he made an interesting comment. I'll just read out the comment when he was asking some questions from Paul Doherty. He said, um, "My handicap over the past years, I've never won the kind of chance I need, the kind any player needs. Do you know that the longest run I've had with the seniors is three consecutive games, and that was last season after results had been going too well." No player has a chance to settle down and show what he can do without getting a reasonable run. It hurts me when I see other players come in, have a lean time to start with, but get a chance to find their feet. It appears the established players have this priority over me. So, yeah, a little bit, a little, just a slight twinge of uh, bitterness. I'm only just getting over the annoyance of events last month. I finally got called up for the home game with Coventry and, the half, and half, having a couple of substitute appearances. It was my first full match and I admit I had a stinker, but there was no second chance and I was out. So, yeah, I mean, that's sort of one paragraph, but it sort of sums it up uh, Probably how, how he was doing on, over these seasons, with, with these five seasons that he was actually actually with us. So that was an interesting comment. 
Uh, he would actually go on to make that season two separate four and five consecutive episodes. So he actually improved his three consecutive games. He actually played four on the trot in the league and he actually played five on the trot in the league that season. So he actually did a little bit better. Perhaps um, perhaps the manager was looking at him thinking, oh, I'll give, I'll give him a bit, a bit of a run. I feel a bit sorry for him, but I doubt it very much. I mean, we're talking uh, Mr Ron Saunders by 73-74, but we know we liked him because we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Ron Saunders, he, he actually took him to, to Villa, but... Uh, yeah, so he must have liked the guy, but again, he was still struggling. And uh, but ultimately, that season was well, it was end to, ending disappointment for me as well. My very first trip to Wembley was in 1974 against Wolverhampton Wanderers, uh, and he did actually miss out on the League Cup final. Francis Lee had picked up an injury, and it was sort of uh, thought that uh, Caradus would get a chance to play in this game. Um, he actually appeared in the Wem in the Wembley notes as well, the program notes, which was nice. A lot of the time, when you look at his games and look at some of the programs, he very rarely featured in the notes or in the team lineups, etc. Uh, yeah, so he thought he had a good chance of playing the game, but uh, obviously Francis Lee made made a recovery. Um, to actually play in the game and, and it just left him a little bit disappointed uh, a little bit deflated and of, of course that sort of rounded up his his lack of progression and obviously mel let him made him feel a little bit down i think we all felt down i felt down going to my first uh cup final but uh there you go that's another story anyway i mean his last competitive game for City was a 1-1 draw on April the 12th, 1974 against Liverpool at Main Road. He actually started the game wearing the number 11 shirt. He did. He sort of wore, wore number 7, number 8, number 9, number 10. He sort of did all the uh, forward shirts over his over his stay at City over the five years. And he is actually on the team sheet uh, listing for the Johnny Hart testimony as well on the 1st of May, 1974. I was at that one, but I can't actually remember whether he played or not. But uh, he may have actually played in that, so that might have been his... His last, if you like, main road appearance in, in, a, in an official way, anyway. And as I said, Ron Saunders had briefly managed him, of course, 73 74 season. He took him to Villa for the 74 75 season. A bit better for Frank. He actually um, did get a good run of games for Aston Villa, and he did actually end up with two Cup winners' medals as uh, two League Cup wins. So that was fantastic for him. Uh, to actually go there and do that, and it was some reward for his obviously his hard work over the years. He scored just two goals for City. I, I actually witnessed both those goals. Uh, one in, a, in the league on November the fourth, nineteen seventy-two, for City at, uh, in a four-nil win over Derby. Uh, that main road. The area of this was there was actually image. There's actually an image of the goal features in the City program against United on the 18th of November 1972, and it shows the goal. It shows the ball going into the net, but it's not actually in the image. It did actually it did actually say on the title to the to the thing. So ironies of ironies, his only league goal, and he's not even featured in the picture, which. Uh, just about, just about, perhaps sums Frank's time up at City, doesn't it? I mean, the irony. I mean, that that is just the meaning of irony, isn't it? That's su such a shame. Uh, and the other, the other goal he scored was the again a game I was at at the City Ground, Nottingham, the very infamous. Uh, I've not done it as a horrible history, but one of my sort of horrible history games, an FA Cup tie at the City Ground, uh, played the first ever, played on a Sunday. I think we had to, I think actually getting by the program was uh, sort of allowed us to get into the into the ground itself. I don't think you could pay at the gate. I think that was the thing there. Uh, and he scored City's only goal in a, in a shock four one defeat. We were well hammered that day. It was kicking off on the terraces, over forty thousand there. It was a horrible day. I didn't enjoy that day at all. I was I was literally. Uh, 14 years old and I got separated from my group of friends at that game so I didn't have a great time I sort of these sort of big big uh, older Nottingham Forest guy sort of looked after me or kept an eye on me but I sort of got separated and it was kicking off all over the place but it wasn't the greatest game but at least it was there I don't remember the goal I don't remember how he scored it but uh, horrible day absolutely horrible day that uh, if you were there you probably probably remember that one definitely a horrible history so there you go, that was his other. So I was there for both his goals. Um, one not so bad and what one not, not the greatest day for me, um, to be honest with you. Uh, there was no doubt in it, he enjoyed. I mean, he spoke fond, not fondly, but he spoke he spoke kindly about City over the years, dis, uh, despite his lack of progression. And, of course, he did love rubbing shoulders with, with the star names when he first came. Um, and, of course, he would later go on to play for City Old Boys as well until wear and tear on his knees put pay to that. He was unlucky, wasn't he, that he was in the squad with the likes, let's face it, he was in the squad with the likes of Summerby, Bell, Lee, 
young Rodney Marsh and even Dennis Law towards the end when Dennis Law came back in 74 so he was he was if you like playing in competition to them guys but add to that also uh, there was a, a glut of younger lesser name lesser known names let's say and names I remember but a lot of you won't remember out there if you're a bit younger than me uh, there was a lot of little younger lesser known players as well you had the likes of Tony Towers Ian Meller uh, obviously went on to do great things with Forrest. Derek Jeffries, and even for the final season, he was competing with another guy. I mean, this is this is a, a player in time in, him, in, his, in himself, a guy called Dennis Lehman, if you remember Dennis Lehman. So, yeah, it was, it was bad enough trying to compete with the big guys, never mind these other young lads who were... We had a glut of good young lads at that, that stage of uh, in City's history. As we said, probably, as I said earlier, probably... Right place, but at the wrong time with uh, with so much talent about for City. Uh, yeah, his appearances carried us in the league. He made thirty three uh, appearances. This is this is taken from one of the City memory, the City history books. Um, nine as substitutes, so sort of forty two if you take the substitutes. Scored the one goal, as I said in the FA Cup. He just made one full appearance, one substitute appearance and scored that goal. So there you go, that's the only goal and I witnessed that. In the League Cup he made three appearances with no goals and in Europe he just made the one substitute appearance which we've already talked about, haven't we, with, uh, with zero goals. So in total, 37 uh, starts, 11 as sub and two goals. I mean, what I'll do, I'll leave the last words with Frank Caridas. This is taken from the interview I mentioned earlier with um, in 1973 with uh, with Paul Doherty, it's very interesting. Again, it's uh, just a, another paragraph. I just just to sort of add to what he'd said earlier. Uh, he said, "I would like to think I can prove myself a good, consistent player for City." This is towards the end of his stay. Don't forget, I'm not a lazy player. I always give my lot, and I am prepared to keep going even if I'm having a bad time. Some City players have far more skill than I'll ever have. But I have more running and physical advantages. I feel in myself that I can only get better. And he did, didn't he? He went on to win get a couple of cup winners' medals, which is fantastic. More than some of the other guys who perhaps nicked his spot occasionally. Some of the younger guys, especially, who nicked his spot from uh, from that period. So thanks for joining me anyway for this uh, player in time feature on Frank Caridas, a City player from 1969 to 1974. And I watched quite, I've watched quite a few of those. Uh, 48 appearances i've probably watched say 30 of them 30 odd 30 odd of those so yeah frank caradus uh, any special memories let me know anyway in the comments thanks for watching what are we going to do this day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families more importantly let's all look after each other so we meet here again on the citizen channel or you have a flit across have a look at my film and tv channel where it is all i ever ask is please stay safe blues come on city thanks for watching bye for now